video, I'm going to show you my freelance 3D VFX slash Web3 workstation. So a couple of people in the comments of my tutorials asked me what my PC specs were. So I decided to make an entire video on my setup. Before I go into talking about my setup, I wanted to give you a quick introduction on who I am and what I do for work. My name is Kevin and around four years ago, I broke my neck. And at the time, a friend and I were running a small media company that did video production, web development, and graphic design. The accident left me completely immobile for a couple of years until I started to slowly recover and used that time to learn 3D and VFX. I have now done countless music videos and jobs for brands like Sprint, Undefeated, Aura, Smart Rings, United Way, Yeezy, and Gap Collab, and have even done internal small animations for Nike. I am currently working on a couple of NFT projects, one of them being my own. Consider joining my Discord where I can answer any questions you might have and where you can see more about that project. It's pretty cool in my opinion. And without further ado, let's get right into the desk tour. So powering my whole setup, I have a very decent PC with very realistic specs that allow me to do a lot of 3D rendering and layers stacked on top of layers of up to 6K video sometimes. The components inside the PC are definitely not the newest or the latest cutting edge CPU or anything, but they are still very capable for a professional workflow. So in the CPU department, I'm rocking an Intel 9900K i9 CPU with a little NCXT water cooler. I do plan on upgrading this sometime this year since Intel has really fallen behind in comparison to what the guys over at Apple are doing with their M1 chips and what AMD has been doing for the past several years. That being said, even though the CPU is a little ancient, it still performs very well. Being fully transparent, it is impossible to have the latest and greatest PC components because there's literally shit coming out every other week. There's always a better CPU around the corner. There's always a better GPU around the corner. So to be realistic, you just gotta choose the option that can get you creating today. Yeah, computers. No, no, we don't even need computers here. We just Moving on to graphics, I use a Gigabyte Vision RTX 3090 GPU, but in all honesty, even though the performance is awesome, I prefer to use the NVIDIA Founders Edition version only because this specific GPU tends to run a little hotter, therefore making it a lot louder than the original NVIDIA Founders Edition. I do a little bit of crypto mining and I moved my Founders Edition onto my mining rig because in that rig I had an additional three 3090 GPUs and they were all founders so I wanted to keep it cohesive. For my RAM I have 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance. I'm vengeance. And memory I have several terabytes of different SSDs. I think the main one being a one gigabyte NVMe SSD so I can run all of my softwares efficient and fast. I house everything in the Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic PC case with nine fans to optimize all of the airflow. I know this case got a lot of negative backlash on TikTok just because it just seemed like everybody had it at one point and it's understandable. I mean, it looks pretty sick, but what really sold me was the description that the Lee & Lee website had for it. I believe it said something along the lines of, display your pc hardware like modern architecture and i don't know that kind of just got me because it sounded super cool for my main display i use an lg 32 inch 4k monitor i'll link it down in the description because the name of these monitors usually tend to be pretty long before buying it i did quite a bit of research and found that this was the most budget friendly high resolution and color accurate option there was i think you can currently buy it for around 300 dollars and um, i highly recommend it for my secondary monitor that i mainly use for visual references or email spotify and even sometimes just twitter i use an lg 24 inch 1080p monitor i believe what I really love about this monitor is the fact that it's virtually bezel-less. The design of it reminds me like one of those Apple Pro Display XDR, I believe is the name. I'm not too sure, but those Apple monitors are super expensive and this one's like, what, maybe $200, I believe? I don't know, I'll link it below, but the design's awesome. Corner to corner display, very minimal chin and bezels. Both of my monitors came with stands, but I didn't want to use them and I got one of those monitor arms that hold up to like two or three monitors. I just think it looks a lot cleaner than the regular stands plus it gives you some more real estate on your desk especially for setups like mine that are not too large about a year ago i decided to start making youtube tutorials because knowledge is worthless if it can't be shared and i did some research and just went on to buy the shore sm7b just because i really like how it sounds it makes your voice sound richer it can really be used for anything from like podcasts videos 
I think apparently even Michael Jackson used it to make Thriller or something like that. I'm not too sure, but it convinced me to buy it and I'm really pleased with it. Holding up the microphone, I use a blue compass, which apparently is not as good as the Rode PSA1, but in my opinion, this microphone stand looks absolutely the best. Powering the SM7B, I use one of those Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, I believe it's called. And if you know anything about the SM7B, you know that you need one of those cloud lifters, which I hid somewhere under my desk. And for my headphones, I really don't use anything fancy, just some regular audio tech Nika headphones that sound very good in my opinion the only complaint i have is that they kind of squeak a little bit if i move around while wearing them which is a little weird but the audio coming from them is actually very good and i believe they're like 40 dollars i'm not too sure but just like everything else in this video i'll link it down below if you want to take a closer look at them moving on to my computer peripherals i use a keychron k2 for my keyboard i saw a bunch of people have it like on instagram and like i think mkbhd has one and a keychron k2 i believe and it's got a bunch of custom keys and it's nice and heavy and metal. And I don't know, I really like the look of it and uh, I like the clickiness of it. The only thing I don't like is that it is a little loud. I believe I have Cherry MX Blue switches in there. Whatever that means, I'm not too much into keyboards, but this one just looks right, feels right, and it's relatively cheap. They're cheap at around what 60 to 80 dollars for my mouse you're probably thinking that thing is hideous and i agree with you but as you may or may not know i had a paralyzing injury that left my hands and legs completely paralyzed about four years ago and even though i can use a regular mouse i choose to use this kensington trackball works mouse because it just makes everything a lot easier for me since my fingers are not fully all the way there so even though it is kind of ugly with my current situation it is the best option there is all right and last but not least i have this sit to stand desk that i use and the first question that might come to mind is why do you want a stand-up desk if you said you were paralyzed well i have this little assistive device that helps me stand up and i usually spend two to three hours every day standing up on it on my desk so i can get some blood flow and leg activation throughout my days as far as the brand of the desk i use i really don't have much to say because i bought a random brand at like a random costco discount store or something like that in my city it was like on clearance or something and it was maybe like 200 dollars. the only bad part about that was that it came with like a dookie colored desktop that i really was not vibing with so i took that desktop out and replaced it with this white ikea desktop i almost don't recommend doing because a lot of the time some of those tabletops at ikea are made out of like cart board which is really not going to work if you're having a monitor arm hold up two different monitors 24 7 that weigh around like 60 pounds together so yeah just be careful on that so yeah guys that's my desk tour everything on the pc is optimized to work very smoothly with cinema 4d octane redshift x particles premiere after effects and davinci and photoshop which is mainly the softwares that i use on a day-to-day -day basis thank you for watching my video let me know if you have any questions or request to make different tutorials i've been doing vfx for around four years and prior to that i did a lot of graphic design web development and video production so i've kind of almost seen it all so yeah guys uh, make sure to leave a like comment subscribe all that good shit uh thank you for watching my video and if you have a moment check out my cool nft project and join our discord where we can uh, talk about anything vfx 3d nfts finance i don't know tech in general yeah thank you